Hello, you're watching The Print. I'm Rishika Sadam. Today we are here at CCMB, Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology in Hyderabad. Ever since the pandemic began in March 2020 in India, CCMB has been at the forefront of several studies and particularly genome sequencing. Today, even a common man is familiar with the term genome sequencing and probably understands its importance, its importance amidst its several new variants that have been making way into the country. In fact, CCMB, 12% uh, of the sequences across the country have come from CCMB. So what is genome sequencing and what happens inside these labs where every time a new variant makes way genome sequencing is done and not just that also to understand if any new variants are prevalent indigenous variants are prevalent within the country today we give you a quick peek inside these labs and probably an attempt to explain it to you that what exactly genome sequencing means and what CCMB has been doing when it says that samples are being genome sequenced in their labs Tell us what exactly goes on in this particular lab. Hi. Uh, so, because uh, samples that we get from various testing centers are infectious, they are actually handled in a separate testing uh, where we do testing for COVID samples as well. Where the infectious material is used to extract the nucleic acid from the virus, that is RNA. RNA all, for all practical purposes is not uh, really infectious, so that is brought over here. And uh, under uh, biosafety, it gets converted into cDNA, which, it is, which goes through a series of further uh, uh, you know, chemical processing steps that make it am amenable to be put under sequencing machines. Right. So that I'll show so you there. what's happening here is essentially the conversion of RNA into cDNA. Yeah. That, that, that. Library preparation. It's called, the entire process is called library preparation, where the RNA is converted into uh, further downstream processed uh, chemicals, which can be put into a sequencer. Uh, so that we, the sequencer can read what is the sequence information present in the nucleic acid. So once the libraries are prepared, they are loaded into uh, either of the machines that are present in this facility. This is called NGS facility. NGS stands for Next Generation Sequencing. In NGS facility, there are different kinds of machines. So some are very high throughput. Uh, the one there is uh, called Nova 6 6000 from Illumina. That is uh, probably one of the most advanced sequences and high throughput sequences that is present currently in the world and it can generate a lot of uh, data at a single time. So for COVID seek, typically we will be able to process about 750 uh, samples in one flow cell run in that, in that machine. So here there is uh, another machine from NGI, it is medium throughput. So depending on the read, uh, uh, the number of samples that you need to process and the speed at which you need to process, we decide on which platform to go for and then process the samples in such a way that we can load them and we get the sequences uh, from the machine. So uh, essentially, uh, let me say, so there are like, you know, DNA has four uh, you know, letters which code uh, the entire uh, the, the sequence. So each letter is probably tagged with a, a specific color. What essentially the sequencer does is that try to, tries to capture the color and infers that is the uh, uh, nucleotide molecule at that particular position in the genome of a uh, person or a virus, whatever it is. So essentially in the library preparation process, you are color coding the nucleotides. And here you are actually capturing the images and saying that at this position, this color is there. So this is a nucleotide which is present. In simple terms, that is a thing. Okay. So this is called Nova 6 6000. Uh, so it is probably the most high throughput and most widely used machine uh, across the world for uh, you know, large scale sequencing and large scale space sequencing project. It can generate up to 3 TB data in one flow cell run, the max. Uh, so, uh, and 3TB is lot of data. It's equivalent to say running 30 to 35 human genomes and several thousands of uh, COVID uh, sequences if you want. So, the cDNA uh, samples that we've seen outside, uh, are they fed to this system or is it like a process that happens? How does it turn? So, it goes through a process uh, where, you know, the color code tagging happens and then you uh, do calculate, I mean, you calculate the concentration, normalize uh, to whatever is required. So that all the samples, because we are not putting one sample at a time, we are putting multiple samples. So all samples get equal representation and that uh, because uh, these are extremely small, right? And if you are using a uh, camera to capture those small signals, they have to be distributed evenly over a flow cell and then uh, that goes into this. This is for example, this is a flow cell where all the uh, you know, library preparation once you do, gets loaded on this. Okay, you the CDNA. Yeah, the fluid actually spreads between, uh, you know, it's sandwiched between two glass slides, you know, which have different properties which are not visible to the naked eye. 
but once it goes into the machine, there are a lot of other chemicals also which are used to elicit the color signal, capture, and then uh, interpret it in a human readable form. Why does the color coding usually happen? So color coding happens in the library preparation process. Okay. So you can either do it manually, where people you know, do multiple steps, or you can use liquid handlers to do it. For example, this is a liquid handler, uh, which can automatically do the color coding uh, process. This one is one liquid handler under a bio safety hood. This can also be used to automatically do the library preparation. So they are also color coded here and uh, you know this machine reads it. Hmm. So this machine can color code. Oh, okay. So this is the machine that Essentially color Essentially a robotic codes? arm which uh, do, does all the manual pipettings, uh, you know, has a PCR machine inside, uh, does the PCR. Oh, so. okay. What's the capacity of number of samples you said in that machine? So we can do uh, say 30, 35 human genomes in one flow cell run. Two flow cells can be run at a, a time. So 60 to 70 human genomes can be done. In, uh, and that takes about 48 hours. Once you put it, it takes 48 hours to complete the run. Okay. And there are smaller flow cells also which generate uh, you know, 300 GB data okay. and that requires smaller running time. Okay. So the COVID seek runs we do, uh, they require about 16 hours to complete. Okay. Uh, so this is the low throughput machine I was talking about. It's a handled uh, portable device from a company called Oxford Nanopore. Mm -hmm. So this can be carried out even to the peripheral centers. Of course, there are certain equipment required for uh, the library preparation and all. Uh, but it can take up to 96 samples in a go. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, irrespective of the capacity and all, uh, the sample processing cost would be similar in all the technologies. Okay. Uh, the advantage of the system is uh, the input capital uh, costs are very less. Mm -hmm. So now uh, many of the labs are getting equipped with uh, this system. Okay. A lot of labs in Europe also have used this for COVID sequencing okay. especially. So if you, when, uh, if you could elaborate a little more when you say input capital costs are low compared to the high-end machines that we have seen, mm -hmm. what exactly does that mean? So this if you want to buy comes uh, uh, within a budget of 20 lakhs uh, mm -hmm. and uh, that takes uh, 2 to 3 crores. Mm -hmm. So these are called precision ACs. All the sequences that I've shown you inside require specific uh, temperature and humidity levels to, op uh, to function optimally because they're very sensitive equipment. Mm -hmm. So these ACs help in maintaining temperatures between 18 to 23 degrees and humidity levels around 50%. Okay.